for us studying what they call the spike wave. Um, and what that is, is basically a large kind of uh, axisymmetric wave or kind of rotationally symmetric wave that is in the middle of the tank. What we do to create this is we um, send lots of waves of different frequencies towards the centre of the tank and um, they travel at different speeds and basically we make the small waves first and then the longer waves second and then they kind of all constructively interfere in the middle of the tank and make this big spike. We were looking at recreating um, a freak wave, quite a famous one called the Drobner wave and what a freak wave is, is basically an unexpectedly large wave that occurs in a population of smaller waves. This was a wave observed in the North Sea uh, on the 1st of January 1995, and it was one of the first kind of confirmed observations of one of these freak waves. So because of that, it's been studied quite a lot, and basically one kind of study about that wave tried to look into the kind of conditions that could have created that wave. And the findings of that study was that they couldn't carry out numerical computations and successfully reproduce this wave without creating it by the crossing of two wave groups. So when they had a single kind of wave train that moved in one direction, um, the wave would break and that, that breaking would limit the wave height. So what we did was uh, we created two different wave groups and varied the angle between those two wave groups. And then what we found was that we could only reproduce the freak wave when we had an angle of around about 135 degrees between those two wave groups and the braking process when the angle between the two wave groups was large changed significantly and that's one of the reasons we're actually doing uh, the spike test today. Um, so if we just look at those images, um, in the first set of images we have here we have a kind of a following case. So basically all the wave energy is traveling in one direction and this is kind of the, similar to the example you might see at the beach and um, what you actually observe is that the waves kind of break in a plunging type case which is what you see at the beach typically and that actually serves to limit the height of the waves and then uh, if we look at this next image of the waves here where we basically change the angle between the crossing wave groups to 135 degrees you end up seeing this kind of spouting type wave breaking and what we actually found is that this type of wave breaking doesn't limit the wave height and in fact it actually enhances the wave height and this is probably the cause of the actual Trautner wave that was observed in the North Sea. In terms of height I think um, they can make them here hit the roof. Uh, I think we try not to do that because obviously it might damage the roof. Um, at the moment we're kind of limiting the height so it's something we can measure, um, but it can be much bigger.